we'll start with the flight controls. We have the yoke in front of us. This is how we fly the aircraft. If we want the aircraft to pitch up, we pull back to go down. We pitch down and it goes down. Roll left, roll right with the aircraft. And then we have rudders, which control yaw. Moving to the center, throttles. Bring the throttles up, power goes up, obviously. Uh, mixtures control a fuel air mixture. There's turbochargers. This aircraft is both supercharged and turbocharged because it was operating at such high altitude. Then we have propeller control switches, cow flaps, and everything here. Up in front of us, pilot side, flight control instruments. Our altimeter, how high we are, airspeed, how fast we're flying, directional gyro, what direction we're flying. And this is called an artificial horizon because sometimes when you're flying an airplane, you're in clouds. You don't have a horizon where you can tell. So you're looking at these instruments to navigate and fly uh, through clouds. One of the instruments we don't use today, but they did back then is called a PDI. That's a pilot direction indicator. So the bombardier up in the nose with his bomb sight is telling the pilot, do you need to go left or right when you're on these bomb runs? The bomb runs had to be highly stabilized. You couldn't move around at all. And it made you a very, very easy target. Moving on over into the co-pilot side, you have uh, engine instruments, manifold pressure. That's how much power the engine is generating. RPM, fuel pressure, oil pressure, oil temperature, all these are monitoring the health of the engines. And then one of the toughest jobs for, for the co-pilot is starting the engines. So there's a combination of switches they have to move in the right time, in the right direction, uh, with a very interesting use of their fingers. Magnetos over there, which turn the ignition on to the engine. And then finally, coming on down here, we have our landing gear control, our flap control, and another thing that we don't use today, bomb pull. This is not how they drop the bombs on a bomb run. But when these airplanes were taking off, they were heavily loaded. They were what we call gross weight, the maximum weight. Oftentimes they were over that with all of the fuel for an eight hour mission, all of the bombs. And if they lost an engine, they wouldn't be able to fly with all that weight. So if they had to, they pull this lever up and all the bombs jettison out of the aircraft. Safety, so hopefully they're not blowing up in some farmer's field.